Good bless you, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this week's Friday Bible study session. I just pray that you all have been well. I know it's been a little bit crazy in uh, in Sydney at the moment with uh, the pandemic. Definitely miss gathering with you all on Sundays, and I'm hoping and let's just all pray um, that this is a short pause in our weekly Sunday meetings, um, so that we can come back and worship and congregate together. So this week we will be beginning a new study. Um, and it'll be titled, Set Apart for Christ. I'll be kicking us off into the new study, and I'll be starting off with a topic of holiness defined. Our scripture reference for tonight will be found in Isaiah 6, 3. So I'll give you a quick minute to get there. It's a short passage. Um, and I'll be reading from the ESV version. Um, and Isaiah 6, 3 goes as this. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole of earth is full of his glory. Before we get into it, why don't we just close our, eye, close our eyes and pray. Uh, so if you could bow your heads with me. Lord, we just give thanks uh, for this time, Lord, that you've given us, for the technology that we're able to use just to um, further spread your word, Lord. We are grateful for the brothers and sisters and also the friends um, that are listening to this, Lord, at wherever they may be. I pray that you just open up their hearts, Lord, at this time. Um, I pray, Lord, that you just uh, cast distractions aside, Lord, and that you open up our hearts and our and our spirits to what you want us um, to hear and obviously learn, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, as I said, the topic is holiness defined. Um, and I, for those writing notes, I will be having subtitles for things just to help you keep track. Um, so to give you the first sort of title, what holiness is, purging misconceptions. Holiness and holy are often to be misunderstood terms found in the Bible. A majority view holiness to be as associated with a negative holier than thou attitude. It seems to be some people like to take it as a sort of a rule stick in regards to the way that they judge other people. This view is seen as a, a tool that they use to implement on others, something that they use to boost their own ego at times, or even prove superiority. For some, holiness is seen as an unattainable perfection. Their view on holiness can sometimes be seen as a discouraging doctrine that addresses sin and with it complete perfection. And to say that the above statements do hold some truth, but in essence fail to grasp the true concept of holiness. In its original language, holiness means to be set apart from common secular use for the purpose of solely being devoted to God. And that's one of those lines that um, I would definitely hi highlight. Holiness means to be set apart from common secular use for the purpose of being solely devoted to God. So holiness means to be set apart. But what does this actually look like? There are two things to consider here. When we are set apart, it is a call to be separate from sin. That is the first, first part of that. And the second part is when we are set a call to be set apart, we are separated unto God for his holy use. Those two components together defines what holiness is in its complete form. And Paul speaks about this when he's writing his letters towards Timothy. And I've got a Bible verse here, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. For everything got created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. It's important to be reminded that the call to holiness is an exclusive call. God never calls us to give him just a piece of our hearts. The call to holiness is a call of our whole heart. God wants all of us, everything, all of our energy uh, for his will. And there is no better place for that to be than in his will. And I've got a verse here, Psalms 119, verse 2. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, 
who seek him with their whole heart. Again, reiterating, reiterating there that the whole heart, God wants our whole heart. The call to holiness is also holistic. And what do I mean by holistic? It is, in definition, concerned with the whole, not just bits and pieces. So when we talk about holiness, we're talking about holiness as a whole, rather than just picking and choosing. What this means is that our whole life is involved, soul and body, for all of eternity and in every aspect of our life. This may be in privacy with God, in the confidence of our own homes, our workplaces, and even our social gatherings and social circles. The call to holiness is a seven day per week, 365 day call upon our lives. God wants us in every aspect, in every facet of our lives. It's not something that we just pick and choose. I'm at Sunday service, I'm holy. And as soon as we leave, we forget, or we even just turn it off. We just um, put that aside. No, God is calling us to be holy, living a holy life always. It is easy to fall into the misconception that holiness is about backwards legalism and superiority. Holiness is a whole life commitment to be set apart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Holiness should not be seen as a list, but a lifestyle. Holiness means to be living in communion and relationship with God, worked out by grace, in faith and in practice, and as I said before, in all facets of our lives. To give you a subheading to the second part, we'll be talking about holiness in scripture, set apart. The first bit, we'll be looking at what holiness is looked at in the Old Testament. And when we look at topics, when we look at studies of things, it's always important to refer back to the Bible. What is the Bible saying about holiness? You know, and it's always good to look at both Old and New Testaments. In the Old Testament, holiness was used primarily talk, when talking in relation to towards God. Psalms 99 verse 9 says, The Lord our God is holy. As we have mentioned in previous studies, that God's very nature is holiness. The Old Testament provides three main truths about God. First point, God is separate from his creation. What does this mean? This means that God is above his creation. There is no one like him. Second truth is that God is separate from all things unclean or evil. Meaning God is moral perfection. There is nothing that can stand in his presence that is unholy or evil. And the third truth about God is, is that due to God's nature of holiness, he is unapproachable by sinners apart from a holy sacrifice. And that is why the sacrifice of, that Jesus paid allows us to be in communion with God. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Everything associated with God must also be holy. We look at the Bible and it talks about the holy Sabbath. His home is the holy heaven. He sits on a holy throne. Zion is his holy mountain. You know, those are just some examples of how in the Bible it's referring to um, the things of God being holy. And so too, his church is also called to be a holy assembly and his covenant people be a holy people. As God's people, we are called to holiness by means of holy separation from sin and a holy devotion to God and worship of God. Looking at the New Testament now, the New Testament carries on the teachings of holiness from the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, there is a greater emphasis on the themes of the Holy Trinity and of the Holy Saints. When we talk about the Holy Trinity, we're talking about the Holy Father. For Bible reference, that's John 17, verse 11. We are talking about Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God. And we are also talking about the Spirit of God. In regards to the New Testament, 
the three main themes when it's talking about holy and the holy saints. First point being, the moral dimension of holiness is inward rather than outward. When we look at the life of Jesus, who is the Son of Man, lived a life complete, completely in holiness, for he committed no sin and there was no deceit found in his mouth. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus is holy, harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners. That's found in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. Those who believe in him are declared righteous and enter into his holiness as we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And what a blessing that is, being reminded that it is through Jesus that we can come and have relationship with uh, with God the Father. Second theme in regards to the holy saints emphasizes the standard of holiness among believers. Holiness belongs to all true followers of Christ. Saints do not refer to a person as holy who is advanced um, in their standing, but is someone that is rather unified with Christ. It is because of Christ's sake that our state is holy before God and our condition is made holy by the Spirit dwelling within us. And that's something, an important thing to remind us, that God's Spirit is dwelling within us. And the third main theme is that holiness transforms the total person. And I'm going to read out 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. As I said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 to 24. Though the believer will fail as we live in this earthly body, it should remain our constant goal and prayer in our lives, that our delight should be to pursue holiness and to fear God always. In ending, brothers, continue to examine your own personal lives and to seek what is holy and to live a life that is truly separated for God's work. Think about the, th the things that are taking our time at this moment. And many of the time that we look and self-examine ourselves, there are things that um, are overtaking our lives. You know, we look at um, the way that society is. It is a constant pressure taking time, um, whether it be um, through work, working overtime or just missing out on uh, church meetings or church gatherings. Um, let that not be a stumbling block, but l let's examine our lives and look at how we can reevaluate where our heart is. As it says in the, in the study, God wants all our whole heart, you know, and the only bless, best place for us is found living in God's will for our lives. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Lord, we just give thanks, Lord, as we reflect on, on you, Lord, on your holiness. And we just give thanks for the work that Jesus has done, that sacrifice on Calvary, Lord, that has given us, that has torn the veil, that we, we have relationship and communion with you, that you have given us your spirit and that you dwell within us, Lord. I pray that we constantly examine our hearts, Lord. We examine our lives. And I pray, Lord, that we continue to seek out to be holy, even in this earthly body, Lord, that we continue to rely on you and your strength as we strive for holiness and as we continue to be a people, Lord, set apart uh, for your work, Lord. I just give thanks, Lord, for this time, for the brothers that have been able to to uh, listen in onto this uh, study, Lord. I just pray that you be with them and that you guide them. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church.